I um, hope you had a great Christmas day. Today's Boxing Day, and I'm out just for a very short time. I don't have a lot of time today, so uh, I did promise Chasing Kings the next video. Um, the guy I was going to be chasing was actually has gone away for a couple of days, so. But I don't have a lot of time today, so I'm just going to come out and get a few snapper because it's been a while. It's been eight days since uh, I've been fishing, and um, yeah, just really looking forward to get. Get the old rod bent over again. Get a couple of good snapper in the bin, uh, then head home because we're quite a bit, uh, quite a bit on today. So um, it's about sort of 6:30 in the morning now. I think the tide is 7:30 low. So uh, I'm not expecting too much. There's a lot of sign under me, so I should stop talking and start fishing. Well, the tide's just starting to turn, uh, going out, and as you can see, the wind's dropped right off now. Um, so I'm just fishing a 60 gram Kibura, just to see, you know, it's quite light, there's not much current at the moment, and hooked onto this one, doesn't feel too bad, feels like I might be a keeper. And yeah, it's good to see a lot of boats out here today, which is good, it's nice to see, nice to see other people out, it's going to be quite lonely out here sometimes, and you're on your own. No one around. I said a couple of guys come up and say hello just for the sake of it, which is nice. And oh yeah, no, he's a bit small. He's a bit small. Little belly there. And there he is little fella. He's in good nick. He's not uh, not bleeding at all. Not blown. We're only in about 13 meters here, so. We'll let him go. Yeah, but he's off. Well, Big Birth is hooked up again. And oops. Hopefully, this one is a bit bigger. Now, bite time is about three hours away, would you believe? So, according to the calendar, so we've got a wee, wee while to wait today. But I don't, I don't have that long, so uh, I'm sort of just changing out colours, changing weights, changing sizes, everything I can think of, just to see if I can get something, get them to bite, because it's not a very ferocious bite at the moment. But uh, anyway, let's see what this guy's like. And uh, yep, he's a keeper. Good. Good stuff. Oh, yep. Yeah, the tide's really starting to run now, so the, uh, the bite's starting to come on. It's about, uh, what time is it? It is, yeah, 20 past nine, so it's, it's taken a few, an hour or so for them to come on, which is to be expected. And yeah, this will be coming home with me, this little fishy. Lovely eating size, these little chaps. Get my new Alibaba six dollars, six dollar mouth grips. It'll be good until uh, it'll be amazing until I. Uh, Stop gripping fish, of course, and I'll be grumpy. <laughs> no, they're actually pretty good. They got a fair old grip on them, so get the hook sellers chap. There we go. Good, beautiful eating size snapper. 
One of the many benefits of living in Auckland is the ability to get out and fish in close and catch those beautiful eating size fish. Uh, the 38 centimetre, 40 centimetre fish, you just really can't beat them for eating. They're just incredible. You can get a lot of bigger fish too. There's many guys that have caught, you know, 20 pounders in close. So it's not just about the smaller fish, but those are the ones I sort of tend, tend to target. I'm just looking to get um, food for the table. And we eat a lot of fish in my house. So to give you some sort of idea, um, I'll just turn my little drawer on. There we go. So Auckland City itself is round about here. I just drew that big black circle. And where I was fishing is here. So you know, not far at all to get into at all. Now, another, a lot of guys fish the Arangi Toto Channel, which is the main entrance. So the big boats coming through here. You know, heaps and heaps of fish uh, there. Great fishing in there. We've got uh, over here, we've got the Motuihe Island Channel there, which is just there. Um, of course, we've got these channels through here. We've got the Tamaki Strait, which is basically just the whole way through here. You know, there's so many spots. And yes, you can get some good sized fish here, but there's a lot of, you know, those smaller fish as well, which are just you know, fantastic. So you don't need to go too far at all. Uh, if you want to go out a little bit wider, then you can basically go out to the Aha Rocks here. So we'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, so that's motive, that's Waiheke there. So there's the Aha Rocks there. We've got Maria Island. Uh, we've got these sort of areas around here. This is the Noises, which you'll see features a lot in my channel. And yeah, a lot of excellent fishing opportunities all around here. So this area holds bigger fish. Um, so if you want to go, you know, slightly bigger, you want to go to sort of 45, 50, 65s, and we caught a 72 there the other day. Uh, you can, and the beauty about this area here, particularly you know, close into the island, it's not that deep, so you can release those bigger fish quite safely. So I've been out with clients, uh, a lot of the clients have caught big fish out here, I think the biggest was about 72 centimetres recently, and we were able to release that fish in very, very good condition. So, you know, it's worth doing. Now, the other thing is, because you know I like my, my history, um, I've been doing a little bit of research on uh, Motuihe Island, this one here, and what I've learned, I did feature it in my one of my videos, I think, twice back. I'll put a link into it in this uh, thing if I can, with the World War I prisoners. But what is interesting is this island is actually called something different. It is called Te Motua Ihanga. And what that means is that the island of Ihanga. And Ihanga was one of the uh, descendants of the first people who landed in New Zealand. And he must have obviously you know, come on this island or spent some time on this island at some point. Motuihe translates to Island of uh, Piper. And in, uh, you know, in New Zealand here, this is the Piper we're talking about here. In Australia, I think they're called Garfish. Uh, here they are here. So you know, that, there's not many around there that I'm aware of. I and mean, there could well be. I don't actually go looking for them. But they are very popular food for snapper and kingfish. So... That's just a little bit for today. Not much, um, but yeah, it's just I find it really interesting the uh, the history. Anyway, so what I want to do now is, as mentioned, um, I've been fishing this area here, so I was basically drifting all the way down here, uh, and there's no secret to it. Over summer, you know, you can just you can fish anywhere here. You'll catch those sort of fish that I was getting. So what I decided to do next was to actually just sneak out a bit wider, and I want to go out to. Uh, out here to the noises which is out in this area here so the next uh, little bit of footage we're going to pick up pick up basically is just fishing this area here Beautiful.
Well, I don't need to tell you which bait I'm on still. I think I've done two grunts so far. That's pretty good for me. I'll just do one now. There we go. <laughs> He's a lovely, he is a lovely fish. And he's beautifully hooked too. Alright, let's get him in. Put that in there. Take that off there. And here we go. Oh. Well, the morning was sort of ripping along and I needed to get home. So what I thought I'd do was just uh, have one more run back down and just do a bit more fishing in this area here on the way home. And that's where the video is going to be taken up now. So it's dropping the old Z-Man new penny again. I'm really not having much joy with this colour. I've tried um, uh, Smoky Shad as well, which is more of a bait colour and not much joy in that so i'm just gonna go on to a gulp shortly and to see because there is a lot of sign i'll show you the sounder you can see uh you can see the sounder there where it's just absolutely you know it's just laden with snapper underneath us so they're not going for this one and they're not going for smoky shad so let's try a different different technique Go straight onto a gulp. So I sort of find this quite often, eh? If the uh, bite is, you know, not till midday and the bite's quite hard and there's lots of sign and you're not really going okay, just chuck a gulp on and give it a try. And I'm going to go for a curly legs. Not that one. Oh, shit, I just dropped that one in the ocean. Sorry. I'll try that one there. That's not a curly legs, but it'll do. Now I counted these the other day from the big packet, which is about a uh, big tub, which is about 30 bucks. They don't actually say how many is in there. So I counted them and the curly legs, uh, crazy legs, sorry, there was uh, 13. So about $2.15 each. So it's pretty cheap if you catch a big fish and it's expensive as the little fish keep eating them. Depending which way you look at it. <laughs> but, uh, I thought I had more than that in there actually, but oh, I must have used a few last time I was out. Alright, so we're just about on the, the floor that straight in. And I lost it. Let's try that again. That felt like a pretty persistent year. This is the problem with these lures, see? So that one now is useless because that was a small fish and just grabbed the tail. So that is the downside of these things. Uh, they certainly entice the bite, but man, you uh, you know you got to be on your on your uh, best game to actually catch them. That's why I, over winter I find these are brilliant in shallow water for bigger fish. The uh, little fish don't seem to go near them. But when you're channel fishing like we're doing here, you're uh, you just got to, as soon as it hits the bottom, just bloody strike straight. Oh, all the other lines in. Oh, that looks like a good fish too. The Kabura. The Kabura is in. Oh, the Kabura was in. Oh, yeah, it's still in. Oh, this will definitely be a keeper. That's what I love about these Kaburas, you can just leave them drifting along with a decent sort of rod so if you do get a decent hookup you're not going to sort of snap or break or whatever and you can end up some pretty decent fish this guy's pulling a bit of string so he might be uh, quite a nice nice fish oh big birth is just loving him a bit of a workout they do get very grumpy reels if you leave them in the garage, you know, don't use them. They're very sulky. 
Yeah, that's a good fish. So where I am, this is Waiheke Island just here. Auckland's just down there. The ramp where I come out of was you know, sort of 15 minutes that way. So you know, you're very close in here. So the ability to come out here and do this sort of fishing so close into Auckland is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. All right, we'll get our brand new. We'll get our new. Beautiful. Lip grippers. There's a bit of an art to this, so first thing of course is get put your reel in there, put the rod there, grab that there, and come and get in there. Gotcha. So that is a beautiful fish. Now I should be able to measure this guy with my new my new measuring tape. So he is can't read it. Uh, 40 what would you say? 44 Four, it looks like 43 something like that anyway it's a little measuring tape there and he weighs he weighs 2.2 kilos isn't it brilliant <laughs> it's the best six dollars I've ever spent all right we'll chuck him put him in here and we'll uh, give him the old icky so I thought I'd have a bit of a troll around for the old um, kahawai and this is how I plan to catch some live bait for uh, king fishing so, always oh, good to get a bit of a practice in. There's plenty of car wire around. Car wire. Okay, we got one. Oh, we, we had one, I think it's got off actually. Oh no, I think it's still there. I think it's still there. Oh, it's a little one. All right, how's this meant to work now, I wonder? Let's try that again. So that must go like that, I suppose, and that would come over there, that's it. There we go, right up. There he is. Oh, that's what they are, little, little baby ones, but uh, these little ones like that, you know, freshly smoked, um, very, 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 very tasty. Uh, next day, to me, it's just my personal opinion, they taste like bait, so uh, eat them fresh, bleed them out, and they're not too bad. So this will be uh, afternoon afternoon tea today. And I'll give them I'll bleed them out shortly. Right, let's do that again. That was fun. Enjoyed that. Oh dear. 
Get this well away from the intake before I take off. Whoops. There we go. Hey guys, I think we'll leave it there for now. Listen, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. Um, I'm also blown away when I get subscribers coming up and saying hello. I had two the other day. You know, and for such a tiny little channel that I've got, it's really amazing that uh, you know they would make the effort. So thanks again. I hope you had a great Christmas. I hope your New Year's Eve is amazing. I hope 2020 is incredible for you. Come back safe and sound. And hopefully the next video, which will be next week, I'm going to go out and get a big kingfish. So uh, stay around for that. Have a great one and see you next week.